Hello and welcome to another episode of Microsoft Fabric. And in today's video, we are going to discuss the recently released feature of copy job inside the Microsoft Fabric. So let's quickly jump onto the release note of copy job. This is the article. I am going to provide you link for the same in the description. We are happy to announce the preview of copy job in data factory, elevating the data ingestion experience to more streamlined and user friendly process. For any sources and destination, now copying your data is easier than ever before. Copy job support various data delivery style, including both batch copy and incremental copy, offering you flexibility to meet specific needs. Then we have been given a little bit or more information and then how the copy job looks like. And then efficiency, enable incremental copying for effortless reducing the minimal intervention. With copy job, you can automatically capture the changes in your data, drastically reducing the manual oversight and keeping the information consistently up to date. This efficiency not only save time but also enhance accuracy letting you concentrate on more strategic tasks while the system handles incremental updates seamlessly. The efficiency translates to the less resource utilization and faster copy time which leads to less strain on the, your system and faster access to updated data boosting overall performance and productivity. So then you have the uh, mapping available here, which you can uh, use during the copy. You can choose the map of the columns uh, for multiple tables also you can do. And high performance, move your data to a petabyte scale. So copy job like copy activity is designed for high performance data movement, allowing you to efficiently transfer vast amount of data across the wide ranges of sources and destination. Wide range of sources and destination and we are going to explore those out soon. Now, what is the prerequisite? Prerequisite is you have to enable a tenant setting and I'm going to showcase you that. And then you will be able to find the copy job. I'll tell you where you can find it. So let me take you through the Microsoft Fabric. I already opened Microsoft Fabric using Power BI experience using app.powerbi.com. And here, first of all, I'll take you to the setting which you need to enable. So go on the right top, there is a setting icon, fourth icon from the right. Click on that, go down. Or you may have to scroll admin portal inside the admin portal tenant settings and inside the tenant settings if you scroll a little bit down you will see this copy job preview and you have to enable this preview i have already enabled it for entire organization but you can enable it for a specific security group or accept specific security group before i'll try out let me show you what tables i have in azure sql which i wanted to try out I am going to bring in two tables for my Azure SQL. One of the table is this item table, which I have already queried for you. And it is having 59 rows. I'm going to insert one row a little later. And then I have a sales table where I have 30,000 rows. Max date is 17th of April. And I have already written down an insert script statement, which I'm going to use to add more data. So let me now go back and try to bring in these two tables into the Microsoft Fabric world using the copy job. So let's go back to the workspace. Workspaces. 01 GA Fabric is the workspace. Click on that. Now I need to create a new object and this new item UI has changed a little bit. When you click on this, you will see a lot of things coming on your right as a pop-up pane. And inside the get data, you have the first activity, which is copy job. When you click on copy job and it gives an error that you don't have Microsoft Fabric enabled, there could be two things. You are not using Fabric capacity or you might not have enabled the tenant setting. You should use a workspace which is either on Microsoft Fabric trial or Microsoft Fabric capacity for this case. Click on copy job. Let me give it as a name, copy sales and item, create and let me choose a source. I'm using Azure SQL database, Azure SQL database. So let me give the URL here and this is the URL which I'm already using for some time. So it may not ask the credential information for that, but based on the requirement, you can choose the authentication, username and password. I have used basic, but you may have organization or service principle depending on the type of database you are using. So let me paste it and let me give the database name, which is demo. And as you have seen that because I've already put down that information in the past, it has taken the already existing connection. Let's click on the next button now. And once you click on the next button, it will take a little bit of time to load uh, 
your tables it is going to get fetch your entire schema and get your list of tables from that tables you can choose what table you want to copy so now let's bring in the two tables which we have decided the item tables and the sales no space table and you can click on one of the table to look at its preview it's showing some data for that if you want you can look for the other table i'm leaving the rest of the table if required you can select all the tables now press the next button now this ui may confuse you a little bit by mistake may press on the new fabric item and new destination but be a little careful either use this one leg data hub from the top or just scroll down you have the one leg data hub. from here you are going to choose that you can go to the one leg hub and here you are seeing your lake and warehouse you can choose any one of those i'm going to choose lake 01 and now i have been shown two tables with the destination you can edit those destination let me call the first table as dbo item underscore cj copy job and let me call the second table which is the sales no space as dbo sales no space cj and you can see for each table i have a column mapping so let me click on that and check out the mapping it opens the mapping ui and moves the tables on the left let it load i can change the data type if required for this table i don't feel a need let's look at the dbo sales no space and let me scroll on the right and here I do feel a need because I would like to make these decimals as double and rest keep it same but in case you are interested you can make some of these longs as integer if required but let's leave them as is now right now price for double it is saying the copying price data may have truncation so in case you want to choose something different you can do that but let's leave it right press on next full copy incremental copy now full copy choose how you want to copy this copy mode will apply it every time you run the job which can be run once or multiple time after the job is created you can schedule how often you want full copy means it's going to bring the complete data remove the older data and bring in the new data that's the full copy and incremental copy means it's going to bring in only the new data string copy is not applicable as of now on my source so we'll choose the incremental copy and it is asking for the incremental column it is not asking for the key so you have to remember that and that's very important it may be only append it is not delete and insert it is not update and insert so we have to check that out so i want to choose item id because item id is going to be incremental column here and in case of sales i'm choosing sales date and based on that we are going to get the new data so let me go ahead and do these things and press next and should I start the transfer immediately or should I wait for it? Here I don't want to do any other changes. So I'll say save and run. Please start the transfer immediately. So as you can see it is saving and it's starting. Running the job. It has started the process as you can see below. I have faced little challenges in the past because I ignored this notice. This job is automatically scheduled every 15 minutes and it is going to bring the data every 15 minutes. And because of that, what happens? I have a serverless tool from where it was querying and it was starting that every 15 minutes and I incurred a lot of cost around that. So be careful. I'll show you the schedule after the data is loaded. We are going to disable that and manually run it. But yes, you can schedule it based on your requirement of the refresh. So sales no space is already loaded. That was pretty fast because that table has 30,000 rows, but item DBO is still in progress. Let's wait for that. It's refreshing automatically you have a refresh icon in case you want to manually refresh here on the left let me click both of them are succeeded now i got 59 rows as well as 30,000 rows now let's go ahead and check the data into the lake for that what i'm going to do i'm going to duplicate this step so right click on the tab duplicate tab and while it is opening i can go to the workspace 01 ga fabric and there we will filter out our lake lake 01 so filter by type we need lake houses so in the lake houses we need lake 01 which is our lake house and let's check out lake house and i can see a couple of undefined here and let's me refresh those and now you can see item cj and no space cj so both are there why don't we go ahead and try out what number of rows they have so what we can do is on the right hand side top instead of lake house let's go ahead and choose sql endpoint sql endpoint it has opened the SQL endpoint. Let's take one query. So click on the three dots. New SQL, select 100 rows. That's the best way to get any query or any table name. And you can scroll down in this case and you can see the rows. And I need in this case count of rows. As I'm going to add some new data and showcase you. Let me also write down select count 
star count star from the table and let me select and run this statement and you can see i have 59 rows and let's do the same thing with the sales no space cj top 100 and simply convert this into count star anyway i'm not going to watch all the 30000 rows and check out what is different so i have 30000 rows works perfectly fine so now let's go back to the sql server management studio where i've shown you my tables initially and what i'm going to do here is basically in my sales table i'm going to insert one additional row let me try to insert one additional row so insert into that sales no space from where i got the data and i'm insert, trying to insert one additional row there and let me insert and what i've done is i with the max date i've added one additional date now because ideal column for the copy job would be a column with the timestamp here i don't have a timestamp so that's why i'm taking the next date and let me add this so i did one row and for item what i will do is i'm manually going to add a row i'm going to right click here and use the edit top 200 rows there's an option on sql server management studio that is the option i'm going to use and here once the ui is going to open i'm going to do two changes one is i'm going to call this item 59 as acer so item name is acer and then i'm going to enter a new row 60 item 60 and rest let's keep same 5 1 2 brand 1 category category 1 sub category is 2 let's press enter and now the data is commented so i have 60 rows in my item tables and i have 30,001 row in my sales table i also have updated one item let's go back to our copy job copy job has been scheduled here for every 15 minutes so first of all let me click on the schedule and i'm going to disable this i can schedule it as per my own need so in case you want to schedule it every 5 minutes 15 minutes whatever you want to do please go ahead and do that so what you can do here is switch it on minute by minute or hourly or daily or weekly and then you can decide the frequency start date end date and time zone but i'm switching it off right now i already clicked on apply it is showing me there's no changes to save now i come back and i have a run button here which i'm going to use to run it again so let me go ahead and run that it is in progress let's refresh and check there's no space is already completed somehow item is taking a little more time but when i done this previous experiment item was faster it has already loaded both the tables let's go to the lake house lake 01 and query let's query with the rows in the sales table select count star from lake 01 dbo sales no space underscore cj we should have 30,001 rows we have let's go ahead and look at the item table how many rows we have we should have 60 rows now we have now we would like to check does it do anything with the 59 because it has not asked for the primary key so i'm not hopeful the name for the 59 is still 59 and the order has changed the item id 60 has come on top so don't go by that this sequence has no matter these our ids matters so you can see the item name 59 is 59 first of all it have not asked for a primary key so it's only asking for what is the column id which has changed so change columns so it's doing the append kind of stuff it's appending the new data so we know in case of append scenario copy job will be able to bring in the new data and append it to your existing tables now let's go back and look at other options so we are in the copy job we have a settings here we can you see the about endorsement and schedule schedule you have already seen and we have disabled it then uh, schedule there is a one more button for schedule here use data source so you can select the data source here loading right now then you have this edit mapping button which allows you to edit your mapping so our edit mapping button is there let's look at the choose data source does it allow us to choose additional table that option i clicked on that so the tables have loaded let's add one more table let me add dbo sales one table now press on next now we we'll added the mapping for this sales one table so there is no change in the mapping required here i can make uh, these prices as uh, double cogs as double and discount as double but right now i would like to leave that let me press next I need to choose the incremental column again sales date is my incremental column apply the changes has been saved the job is not yet started let's refresh and let's check that out okay so job has not run it is just saved the job so let's run it manually we have already stopped the schedule so it's not going to run on a schedule and let's see what does it do this time 
So the job has started. It's automatically refresh and then there is a frequency of ref refresh basically. Within a minute it refresh faster, post that it's closed down. Already in 26 seconds. Here's what table is already in and other tables are already in. The other stats you should pay attention to. Number of rows read, number of rows written. Uh, so zero rows in these two tables. In this case 15,124. Same rows has been written. So these are some of the stats. Total duration it has taken, start time and end time. And status, source, destination, status, row read, return, duration, run, start run time, end run time. You can apply certain filter. If there are too many tables, you can filter based on the status, column option. If you want to remove some of the columns from this report, there is a more button out here, which tells you about more information about the overall job. And it talks about row, re row rates, row written, about the total job and throughput in KBs. So this is copy job for you. So why don't you go ahead and try this out and do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series. Thanks for watching this particular video. Thank you. Keep watching, keep asking questions in comments, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notification for new videos. Thank you.